Now remember, do what Grandma and Pop Pop say and don't give them any hassles. No problem. Yeah, Mom. Hey there! Hi! Hey. 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 Well, I see you finally made it. Well, son, did you miss that tricky turn? Yeah, and of course we had to stop a lot. I'll have to take the blame for that. <laughs> <laughs> And we ran into all kinds of road construction. Well, we're just glad you made it safe and sound. Now, here's our itinerary with all the phone numbers. Can't you even stay for a cup of coffee? Well, sure, wish we could, but it might make us late for a plane. Well, goodbye then. Bye. Bye. Have, Have a safe there. trip. Regret a ghost kiss will have the best friend yet. They get sweet cakes for grandkids, kids and grandfolks, yeah, you can play all that day. With things, cakes for grandkids, kids and grandfolks, yeah, you can play all that day. Got the gear all ready. Let's go fishing. All right. Well, we'll be back before dinner with the dinner. <laughs> Good luck. Be careful. Well, dear, let's get your things unpacked. Oh, Grandma, this is going to be so neat. A whole week with you, just us two women. What will we talk about first? How about boys? Well, sure. But right now, we need to get you situated. I've got a zillion things to tell you. You know that I made the finals in cheerleader tryouts? I may very well be one of the next Panther Prancers. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, and Betsy, my new best friend, said that if I made the cheerleading squad, I could hang out with her at Bon Journey. What in the world is that? Oh, it's the neatest place. All the football players hang out there after school. It's cool as all. Well, just don't get into trouble. But Grandma! Bon journey, huh? Yeah, I remember my days when I was a head cheerleader in Fairy Game Mother School. Rah, rah, ree, Fergie, tackle him at the knee. Rah, rah, roll, Fergie, grab him by a toe. Rah, rah, rut, Fergie, kick him in the... Who is this person? Oh, Grandma, it's the Fairy Game Mother. She's been coming to visit us ever since our trip to Orlando last year. Remember we told you that we started out having such a lousy trip? She gives us games to play when we're bored. 
Hey there, Granny. You look exactly how your grandkids described you, only older. I beg your pardon? Oh, no offense intended. It's just that I noticed that you don't look real happy. A tragic thing. This is the twilight of your life. With these great grandkids of yours and a good-looking hunk like Pop-Pop, you should be feeling like sweet 16 again. Well, I never. Where's your boyfriend, Fergie? Oh, he's over in Japan working on some newfangled computerized mood whacker. Rah, rah, ray, Fergie's left you for the day. So what, may I ask, are you doing here? Oh, I'm here to give you a game to play. Sounds as if you could use a little something to break the ice. You mean something to bridge the generation gap? And have fun at the same time. Let's get started. Okay. You simply pick a letter of the alphabet and make that letter the no-no letter. You mean we can't use that letter? Right. Now the trick is to carry on a normal conversation while avoiding the no-no letter. In other words, you have to do some pretty fancy footwork. Right, Granny. I hope you don't mind me calling you that. After all, you're less than one-tenth my age. When you put it that way, by golly, I feel younger already. Okay, let's say, uh, F is the no-no letter. Keeping this in mind, ask Amy about her boyfriends. Okay, Amy, do you have a boy, uh, let's see, let me put it another way. Amy, do you have any suitors? Suitors? You mean like a tailor? Someone who makes suits? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. In my day, a suitor was a beau that courted a gal. Courting? Like in tennis? <laughs> <laughs> I can see you two have a lot to talk about. Now that you know that a suitor to your grandma is the same as a boyfriend to you, you can answer the question. But remember, not to use the letter F. Yes. I have a boy, um, let me rethink this. Yes. I have a boy I like. His name is Jake. Where did you meet him? In my French... No, wait a minute. In my foreign lang... No. I mean one of my classes. You guys are fantastic. That's, That's a no-no. Huh. I mean you guys are great. And you out there, if you want to break the ice in a hurry, turn off the tape and play the no-no game. Either way, if you want to play the no-no game a different way, just make it a rule that the no-no letter has to be included in the sentence. Ah, uh, I guess that would make it the yes yes game. <laughs> I'm pretty smart, you know. Well, that's why I went to school. You can learn lots of practical things from going to school. Things that you can use your whole life. Yeah, school is great. Rah, rah, runk. Perky is a hunk. You. I bet you we'll get the biggest one in the lake. What do you say? I hope so. So, ever use a rod and reel like this one before? I bought it special for you. The best one in the store. Thanks, Pop Pop. It's neat. Sounds like you fellas could use a game. What in tarnation is going on here? Who are you? It's all right, Pop Pop. I know her. She's neat. I'm the fairy game mother, and I'm going to help you fish. Well, I've been fishing on this lake for pretty near 40 years. There ain't a thing a fairy can tell me about fishing that I don't already know. No, Gramps, you got me all wrong. I don't mean catch a fish. I'm going to help you fish for some companionship between you and Billy here. Companionship? Yeah, I was eavesdropping in on your uh, somewhat limited conversation and thought you could use something to fill up the holes. You know, between now and the time you catch uh, Moby Dick or whatever it is you're trying to catch here. How do we play? Oh, it's easy. This is a game called Looking Back. One person comes up with a phrase, for example, uh, hook, line, and sinker. Now, the next person has to repeat the phrase except backwards. Oh, piece of cake. Let's see, a sinker and line hook. Gee, that was super, Pop-Pop. Not bad. But I gave you an easy one. Bet you can't do this one. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Well, let's see. A uh, uh, wood chuck could uh, chuck chuck wood. Ch <laughs> I, I can't get it. <laughs> 
Pop up, you're starting off backwards and ending up frontwards. <laughs> so I am, Billy. So I am. Why don't you start off easy? You'll have plenty of time to get to the harder ones, and in the meantime, I need to see about the women folk. But don't you want to stay and fish with us? Here's an extra rod. I'll just put this worm on your hook and. Oh, goodness sakes alive! Look at that thing! Oh, yuck! Ooh, it's squirming! Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Think I'll just stick to my job as a fairy game mother. Well, how about starting us off with a looking back phrase? Oh, this one ought to be perfect. Turn off the tape now. <laughs> <laughs> Where are those men? Dinner's almost ready. Just came from the lake. Believe me, they'll be a while. But I told them the dinner would be around 6 or 6.30. Excuse me, but for some people, that's quite a time span. 6 or 6.30 starts out at 6.15 and can go all the way to 8 o'clock. My best friend Judy told me that her mom and dad fight all the time about football minutes. What are football minutes? Well, you know when the guys are watching a football game, and at the end they give the two-minute warning? Yes, that's right. I'll say, Pop Pop, dinner's ready. And he'll say, The game's almost over. They just gave the two minute warning. What they don't tell you is that the last two minutes of a game could last 15 to 30 minutes because of all the timeouts and other reasons to stop the clock. And by then, dinner is cold. So when we tell him dinner will be around 6 or 6 30, it really doesn't mean anything. Right. But I've got a nifty idea that should solve your problem. What's that? Sounds wonderful. A family bulletin board. You can list all the events, chores to be done, important messages, and... and... the times that the meals are really scheduled. Exactly. If you don't want to buy a bulletin board, just get a big sheet of cardboard. I've got this one that I was going to use for a yard sale sign. I can cover it with contact paper. That's perfect. Now, Amy, get a magic marker and write on the top, the Valentine Family News. Got it. Grandma, this is fun. Sure is, Dumpling. Now, find a small calendar and staple it to the board. If you don't have a stapler, use glue or Velcro. Then divide the rest of the board into categories. Like daily messages? Right. And one for chores, grocery list, upcoming events. Birthdays, anniversaries. Graduations and christenings. Don't forget dinner engagements. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and you folks out there, young and young at heart. Why don't you get going on a family bulletin board? It's useful, it's industrious, it's creative, and it's a great way to get your family organized. Wonder where that Fergus is. He said he was going to call from Tokyo. He better not be messing around with those geisha girls. Why, I'll ring his neck, the old so-and-so. Great dinner, honey. Yeah, super. Great dinner. But what happened to that fresh fish we were supposed to have? We were playing a great game Fair Game Mother taught uh, us. Yeah, and, and uh, we lost our concentration. Uh, to fish properly, you need a lot of concentration, you know. Sure. <laughs> right. What we need now is a game all of us can play. Hello, hello, hello. What's this I hear about needing a game? Where have you been? All day I've been hearing about this fresh fish dinner. So after I realized that it wasn't going to happen, I flew over to the Mediterranean and had a feast. All that way for dinner? Yep. Picked up a great game along the way, too. Rob the Baker. Here's how it goes. Everyone get five objects, such as coins, buttons, or how about those jelly beans over there? Some people call them jelly bellies. Yeah, like former President Ronald Reagan. Now watch what you say. I'm a Republican, you know. Well, I voted for him, even though I'm a fairy crap. I was just remembering the fact that he was the oldest president ever elected. Darn tootin'. But how come you didn't vote your own ticket? Temple! Didn't have any fairy grats running. <laughs> <laughs> fairy game mother. Don't eat all those jelly beans. They can be the game markers. Mm. 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 Sorry. Mm. Now everybody grab five beans. To start the game, you have to appoint a banker. I'll take that position. Wait a minute. How come you get to be banker? Just like Reagan. I'm the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now number off. I'll be number one. I'm two. I'll be number three. I'll be number four. Now, I'll start by telling a story. 
When you hear your number in the story, you have to snap your fingers or clap your hands that many times to get a jelly bean. If you don't, you'll lose a jelly bean. Everybody ready? Sure. I'm ready. Oh. Once upon a time. Great, Billy. Here's a jelly bean. Now, where was I? <clears throat> Once upon a time, there were two. I say there were two. Who's two? Uh-oh. That was me. Caught me by surprise. That'll cost you one jelly bean. But I... No buts. You lose one. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Once upon a time... There were two. Uh, you're not going to catch me a second time. <laughs> green horses. Green horses? Yes, green horses walking through a patch of purple four-leaf clovers. Okay, Amy, hand it over. Rats, that was number three. How about you out there? Want to play Rob the Baker? Turn off the tape and get going. Mm, mm, just love the red ones. Mm. Very gay, mother. mother. Don't, Don't eat, eat the, the jelly, jelly beans. beans. Mm. Oh. Mm. I wasn't eating the jelly beans. I was just tasting them. Uh, you know, checking to make sure they were okay. Mm. Uh, wondering what they'd feel like in my mouth. Uh, but maybe they were too old or something, you know. counting, we had 42 fish. Wow! That was quite a memory. Yep, I've got a million of them. That reminds me of a great activity everyone can share. Don't let those memories fade. Write them down in a notebook or tell them aloud into a tape recorder. Every time you're together, you kids remind your grandparents to tell you about their past. That's neat. I bet all the grandkids in the family would love to read it or hear it. Darn right. It's important for all of us to preserve history for our relatives. After folks are gone, if they haven't kept any record, no one else will know exactly what happened throughout their lives. Well, I've been keeping a notebook of funny stories for over 300 years. Just think, Grandma, 300 years ago, you would have been just a kid. Why, you old coot, just a kid in my eye. Well, that was fun. I remember things I hadn't thought about for years. You two are amazing. You've done some fascinating things. But Fairy Game Mother, what was this game you were going to teach us dealing with our memories? Oh, yes. I'd almost forgotten. It's called... Memories! It's a game which will show us who's got the sharpest memory. Amy, get a piece of typing paper and fold it in half. Okay, I have one right here. Now fold it in half again. I did it. And again a third time, and finally a fourth. Now open it back up again, and you'll find 16 little squares. Write the numbers 1 through 16 inside the squares. Will there be prizes? Sure. I was just getting to that. How about a million dollars as one prize? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, for that. What about a 50-foot yacht? I'd like a trip around the world. Now you've got the idea. Write down eight prizes in random order on two of the squares on the reverse side of the paper. What do you mean in random order? For example, what's a million dollar prize on the back of square, uh, let's say, two and 13? The trip on the back of uh, six and 10 and so on. Once you've filled in all the squares with the 16 numbers on the front and the eight prizes written down twice on the back, take scissors and cut along the fold lines. I'm ready. Next, arrange the squares number side up in order from 1 to 16. Each person in turn picks two numbers. One person turns over two squares, and if the prizes on the back match, you win. Mm, that sounds like the TV game, Concentration. But what happens when all the prizes have been won? Then we'll take the million dollars on our yacht and travel around the world. <laughs> <laughs>
Work, work, work. It seems endless. If only Pop-Pop would pitch in. Billy is really good about kitchen work. He even cooks. That's wonderful. Never tell him I told you, but he's really good at it. I'm so proud of you kids. Sometimes I worry that I don't tell you how much you mean to me. I always get too caught up in my day-to-day -day things. Oh, Grandma, we all know how much you love us. Yes, but if only... But if only I'd made my famous cheese ball, the Gremlin Gale would have gone better. Very gay, Mother. Were you listening in? Well, actually, uh, I heard the tail end of the conversation on my CB as I was flying in. I'm so embarrassed. Oh, don't be. Feelings are the fruit of life. Oh, very Sweet. gay, Mother. Please don't sing. Oh, well, uh, well, I'm, I'm not warmed up. I'm kind of tired. Uh, uh, there was a lump in my mattress. <laughs> Sounds like the princess and the pea. Well, it was a good excuse at the time. It's like your excuse of your day-to-day -day activities. You're right. There's no excuse for not expressing your love every day. That the spirit. Now you go over there and you give your granddaughter a nice big hug. I love you, Grandma. And I love you, too. Oh, that's the sweetest thing I ever seen. <laughs> love is such a tender thing. Enough already. already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Now, all that whole thing reminds me of a great game called Excuses. The first person starts off with a simple phrase like, I could have been a great opera singer. The next person finishes that statement with an excuse like, ah, uh, but I had to watch my soap opera every day and didn't have time for lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a true life story. I understand. Then the first person would continue the story and it would go on and on. Right, Granny. And you would try your best to keep the story going as fast as you can. Like, I didn't get my English essay finished because... Because my dog chewed up the notes. And then the teacher made me do an essay on how to train my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a ticket. And after that, my dog was so smart, he wrote the essay for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to stick around and play excuses with you, but I have to check on my boyfriend, Fergie, and make sure he's not checking out anything more than his new computerized mood whacker, if you know what I mean. And you out there, you have no excuses not to turn off the tape now and play excuses. <laughs> singer, but my bed was lumpy. Did they really say that? Yeah. Uh, they even said you were a good cook. Well, uh, I like to cook. In fact, everyone says I'm good at it. Oh, that's great. A real chef in the family. I'm proud of you. I don't like the cleaning up, though. Well, when I was in the Navy, my best buddy was a cook. He told me that if you clean everything up as you go along, by the time dinner's ready, you have nothing to clean up except the dishes you serve on. I'll bet you five dollars it'd save you a lot of time in the end. Wow, good idea. So, Pops, you're a gambling man, eh? Uh, on occasion. I'll make you a bet. You're on. Okay, we each need to put ten pennies on the table here. Now, the object of the game is to remove pennies one, two, or three at a time. But how do you win? Seems easy, but it takes careful planning. You have to arrange it so that you are the one to leave the last two pennies on the table. Hmm, well, I don't quite understand, but uh, let's give her a trial run. You got it, Gramps. I'll go first. Hmm, figured you would. I'll take out three pennies, leaving seven. Okay, and I'll take out two pennies, leaving five. I knew I'd win. Now all I have to do is take out three pennies and leave two. What? Well, what did you say the name of this game was? Why, it's called My Two Cents, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great game. Can we play Pop-Pop? 
Sure can, but this time I bet I'll leave the two pennies. Gotta get in your two cents, right, Gramps? <laughs> <laughs> Wanna play my two cents? Turn off the tape now. You always have such a pretty yard, Grandma. It takes a lot of time, but it sure is worth it. You know, all my life I've loved to work in my garden. It's kind of, well, therapeutic. You mean you can think things out, sort out your troubles? Yes, make a decision, plan ahead, and just relax. Maybe someday I'll have my own garden and yard. You do, right here. What do you mean? Well, see that patch of weeds over there? That's the perfect spot for your garden. I'll show you how to clear it, get it ready for planting, and then we'll plant some things, vegetables perhaps. Or maybe flowers. I love flowers. Whatever you want, it's yours. Oh, Grandma, thank you so much. And when you get a good batch of flowers going, I'll show you how to dry them and press them and... Oh, hi, fairy guy mother. Did you find your boyfriend? No, but I found out that he's been a good boy. Flying around the world looking for some parts for his new computerized mood whacker. He'll show up eventually. Picked up a great game while I was in Osaka called Transformation. Wanna play? Sounds great. We can play while we work. Okay. The principle is simple. Just come up with a phrase using two short words. For example, boy to man. The idea is to transform the word boy into the word man using the least possible steps. Oh, and by the way, each step must be a real word, get it? I don't think so. You catch on. I'm going to change the O in boy to an A, making it bay. I see. Then you can take the word bay, change the B to an M. And that would make may. You guys are sharp. Now I'll take the Y in may and change it to an N. And that makes man. Terrific. And we did it in only three steps. This is a wonderful game. Let's challenge the men after they get home from the lake. And you listening in, see how many words you can transform when playing Transformation. Ta-da! Pop up, do you think we'll ever catch anything? Well, I'll tell you, son. It may just be a lot of waiting, but eventually it'll all pay off and we'll start hitting the big ones. But what happens in the meantime? It's so quiet out here. Actually, a lot of strange things have happened while fishing on this lake. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, I'll tell you about one fishing trip I was on. My buddy and myself had just pulled into this beautiful little cove on the south side here. Set out bait and cast into what appeared to be a real good prospect. When lo and behold, we looked up on shore and saw an alligator advancing. Gee, was it a big one? Yep, it was at least 25 foot long. Made the crocodile in that Australian movie look like a bouncing baby. What did you do then? Well, he took my bait and swallowed that hook. I started to reel him in and he began to make a terrible ruckus. Just like a chicken cackling. A chicken cackling? Yep. And he was paddling his feet just like a dog dredging. A dog dredging? Yep. And I knew if I ever got him up in the boat, he'd give me more trouble than a, uh, an elephant, uh, 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 elephant exercising. Elephant exercising? <laughs> hear a game going on. <laughs> oh, so you found me out, huh? What's going on? Your grandfather is playing one of Fergus's favorite games. It's called My Fishing Trip. I think it has something to do with the letters of the alphabet. Pretty sharp. That's my grandson. You just make up a story, and each sentence has to end with two words that start with the same letters of the alphabet. And to make it real hard, you try to go through the whole alphabet by the end of the story. Wow! Your next letter after the <clears throat> exercising elephants is F. Why don't you give her a shot, Billy? Okay, 
That old alligator had me looking like a frozen fritter. Frozen fritter? <laughs> That's a real quirker. <laughs> and how about you out there? You want to play the storytelling game called My Fishing Trip? Turn off the tape now. Remember, we were talking about that family tree? Why don't you grandparents and grandkids get a piece of paper and begin to trace your genealogy? Turn the paper sideways so the long side is on the top. Now, grandparents, list your father's name on the left side and your mother's maiden name on the right. From there, go down the page a few inches and list your name and the names of all your brothers and sisters, spreading them evenly across the page. Go down another few inches and start listing the names of your children and the names of all your brothers and sisters' children. Be careful at this point to write a little smaller and put less space in between names because your family tree's going to start to get a little crowded here. Go down another few inches and list the children of your children and on down through the generations. If there are any missing links, you kids get your pens or write into those relatives who can help you fill in the blanks. Then when it's all done, you might get some nice poster board and redo each one nice and neat and give them as presents. A family tree is a great way to start everyone in your family thinking about who they are and where they came from, and most of all, where they want to go. Bye-bye. Wonder where everybody went. Hello? Anybody there? Hello? You know, Grandma, I believe we have the finest grandkids in the whole U.S. of A., Maybe even the world. Well, for once, I think you're right. Grandma! Only kidding, you old coot. Billy, I think we have the best grandparents in the whole world. They sure are. Ow! Ow! That's one of the sweetest scenes I, I ever saw. Just wish Fergie could have Fergie could have seen it. Where is he anyway? Well, hog tie me and put me out to pasture. I hear you call it a little, darling. Goodness, you scared the tar out of all of us with that new mood whacker. Yep, it's the most advanced, computerized, futuristic mood whacker ever created. Check it on out. Oh, Fergie, what a one. Whoa, a girl could go crazy. That's the general idea, my little wing flapping flower of fairdom. Oh, first. <laughs> uh, oh, I'd like for you to meet some nice folks. Pleased to meet you. Any friend of the fairy game other is a friend of ours. I've been teaching these nice folks a few games. Is that right? As a matter of fact, I played a great game called Pencil Pusher while I was on my trip. Can we play it now? Do you have a pencil and paper? Does a duck have bananas? Of course we have pencil and paper. Here it is. Okay. Now the first person makes a squiggle with the pencil and then passes it on to the next person. That person tries to make a picture out of the squiggle. Sounds easy enough. What makes it tricky, though, is the time limit. Everyone counts one fairy game mother, two fairy game mothers, three fairy game mothers, and so on, all the way up to ten. Huh. Ten fairy game mothers? <laughs> you mean they have to finish the picture by the time they get to ten? That's right, little darling. Bet we'll see some of the weirdest pictures ever drawn. Can I go first? Sure can. You can draw the squiggle. And I'll make the picture. Turn off the tape now to play Pencil Pusher. Pencil Pusher was a neat game, Mr. Fluhoffer. Ah, uh, just call me Fergie, little princess. Well, the boys are off to go fishing again, <laughs> as if there was nothing else in this world to do. Where's the fairy game mother? Taking a little beauty nap, I reckon. <laughs> it takes more naps than any woman I know. Well, maybe Fergie could give us a game to play. No problem, little darling. How about one called, in other words, it's one of my favorites. How do we play? You just pick a big word and then try to find as many other words inside as possible. I don't quite get it. Well, I'll show you how. Let's take the word continental, for example. The most obvious word to come out of it is continent. Oh, now I see. 
How about the word tin, spelled T-I-N? Great. That'll take the prize. I've got a short one. My word is on, spelled O-N. Good, little princess. Now it's my turn. But before I find my next word, why don't you little whippersnappers and grand folk out there turn off the tape and play in other words? Well, how'd do, partners? Catch it anything? Uh, nothing but a cold is chilly out here. If we don't get something pretty soon, I'll have to go home empty-handed. Well, I wouldn't worry about that none. I got a feeling in my bones that you'll start getting something real soon. In the meantime, want to pass a little time with a game called Static Dance? Sounds great. How do we play? Well, you can use that newspaper you brought to wrap fish. I can see you can spare a sheet or two. I'm afraid so. Just tear little strips of the paper and pretend they're people. You can use the magic of static electricity to make them dance. How do you do that? Well, take your comb, run it through your hair several times. Okay, I did it. Now hold the comb about an inch above the paper, people. Wow, they're standing up. Yeah, now move the comb around and make them dance. This is terrific. Wait till I show the kids back home. Wait till I show Grandma. And how about you folks out there listening in? Want to practice a little scientific magic? Turn off the tape to play static dance. And in the meantime, I think I'll use a little magic to make sure these fellas catch a few fish. Hey, pop up! I got a fish! Well, well, so do I! And what a whopper! I told you I looked and found a change. Mmm, <laughs> just love a home-cooked fresh fish fry. those men. Dinner's almost ready. It'll be ruined if they don't get here soon. Uh -huh. Did somebody say dinner? I'm starved. Very gay, Mother. <laughs> You're always starved. Watch out. I'll put steaks in your bed. You mean snakes? Oh, don't say snakes. Wish we had something to do till the boys come back. Not just the thing, Grandma. It's called sequel. We had that word in school. It means <clears throat> a continuation. Any literary work continuing a story began in an earlier work. Nice recitation, sweetheart. I can sure start the story. Once upon a time, there were two people out fishing. Now you have to repeat the first part of the story and then add some. Well, that makes it harder. But here goes. Once upon a time, there were two people out fishing, and they were late for dinner. I'll go next. Once upon a time, there were two people out fishing, and they were late for dinner but they promised that this was the night they would bring home the fish. <laughs> <laughs> you out there waiting around. If you want to play sequel, turn off the tape now. Bergie, I was beginning to wonder where you were. Well, little darling, I was just out on the lake doing a good deed. Have those boys caught anything? <laughs> I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Oh, Fergie, under that rough, tough exterior, there beats a heart of pure gold. Would you both be able to stay for dinner? Well, that's right nice of you, ma'am. You bet. I'm so hungry I can eat my mood whacker. We're home. You didn't think we could catch any fish, but look at these. Wow! Oh, I can't oh, believe it. Alive. Ooh, looks like Moby Dick. They really did it, just like they said they would. Who can that be? Your folks aren't expected till tomorrow. Hello, everybody. Hi. It's Mom and Dad. Here so soon? Yeah, the hotel messed up our reservations. They didn't have a room for us on the last night, so... So we hopped on a plane, and here we are. Your timing is perfect. Dinner's ready. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I'm starved. 
You two remember the fairy gay mother and Mr. Fluhoffer? Oh, yes. They've helped us out on several occasions. Hi, Fergus. Long time no see. You should see the mess of fish the boys caught. Yeah. pop Pop said we could ice him down and take him home in his cooler. Okay, Mom? Sure, dear. Well, folks, got to get going. Got a family that needs our help halfway around the world. Oh, please teach us one more game before you go. Oh, yes, well, please. Sure, I guess. Okay, here's one called Finger Code. Now, first we have to divide everybody up into teams of two. I want to be with Pop Pop. Grandma, why don't you and I be partners? Dad and I'll be a team. Now, the first thing we need to do is get each person from each team to write out the alphabet on a piece of paper. Make sure to leave enough space after each letter to assign a number. After the letter A, put the number one, after B, number two, after C, number three, and so on. Now, get someone not playing to think of a short phrase like, I love you, and tell one player of each team. Now, the whole idea is to relay the message to your partner by using your fingers. Look down on your charts and see that the number beside the letter I is nine, so you hold up nine fingers. The letter L's number is 12, so you gotta hold up 10 fingers, then two more. This is gonna be a neat game. Who wins? The first player receiving the finger code that shouts out the correct phrase wins a point for their team. And after you play a few times, you just go ahead and change partners. It's a great game to play with a whole corral full of folk. I'll start you out with a phrase. Fresh fish fry. You folks out there might try playing finger code. If so, turn off the tape now. While they're playing finger code, I want to get serious for a minute. Billy, Amy, Pop Pop, and Grandma are very lucky people. Not all kids get the chance to know their grandparents. And not all older folks have any grandchildren to lighten up their latter years. And even if they do, chances are their grandkids live far, far away. They may not get to see each other but only once or twice a year. Wouldn't it be nice to adopt a grandparent or grandkid? You can, you know. You kids can contact local schools, churches, organizations like Meals on Wheels, or better yet, a nursing home or convalescent home in your area. Find someone that would love to spend a few minutes a week with you. Bring them flowers to brighten up their days, exchange pictures, swap stories, sing songs together. One nursing home company called Beverly Enterprises has an adopt-a-grandparent program for scouting organizations and other groups. An adult can call Area code 818-792-2292. And you grandparents, whether or not you have grandkids of your own, you can give much needed love and direction to youngsters by calling the Foster Grandparents Program at 1-800-424-8867. Adopt a grandkid or grandparent today. That's a nice thing to do. Well, folks, we better get going. We've got a long drive ahead. Look what Grandma gave us. Valentine Productions tapes, games for the road, and more games for the road. Well, that ought to help pass the time. Well, fairy game mother, Mr. Fluhoffer, thank you so much for entertaining us these past few days. I feel that my relationship with my granddaughter is so much stronger. Ah, oh, Grandma. You know, over here, I found myself a new best friend. I love you, Pop Pop. And as always, if you ever need us for a special occasion, or if you're just bored, give us a holler. Well, Fergie, off again on a new adventure. Let me check out this new mood whacker. Whoa! What a charge! Whoa! Almost knocked me senseless. <laughs> oh, let's use it to fly over to England and have tea and profits with the Queen. Uh, yeah, then we'll try it out on the palace garden. <laughs> 